After a winter's long hiatus of no streamer tactics, we're back. Turns out it's hard to shoot underwater video when it's really cold outside. And we had a nasty cold winter. Episode 1 we covered rods and reels. Episode 2 we covered lines. And this episode of Streamer Tactics, we're covering leaders. In episode 2, covering fly lines, I told you that fly lines were probably the one piece of equipment that I have to have exactly right. And that's very, very true. But if you have the right rod and reel and line and everything like that, but you have a leader that's just way off, it negates everything. Define negate. I don't know if I'm using that word right. I was. Generally, when you're streamer fishing, you're targeting very, very specific zones. Those zones typically require your fly to act in a very specific way. The vast majority of the time, we want our fly to get to the depth that we want to fish it as fast as it possibly can. If you're fishing a fairly shallow running line, like an intermediate line, and you want to fish your fly a foot below the surface, you want your fly to get a foot below the surface as fast as possible. If you're fishing a three inch per second line and you're fishing two feet deep, whatever, you want your fly to get to that point as fast as it possibly can. So if you're fishing a nine foot tapered leader on either of those lines, it's gonna take the fly a lot longer to get to the zone where you want it than it would if you were fishing a shorter leader. I think the, I think the best analogy for all of this is probably like a parasail. Everybody's seen those parachutes where a boat is pulling a parachute and the people are riding. It's almost exactly the same thing. So the boat is pulling the parasailer. The more line they let out, the farther away the parasailer gets. Streamer fishing is exactly the same thing. If you're fishing a nine foot leader or any tapered leader on a sinking line, when you make your cast, the line will sink, which starts to pull the leader, which finally starts to pull the fly. So your line gets deep, the fly still hangs up up here. We don't want that. So pretty much, a longer leader, the fly fish is a little more shallow. The shorter leader, the fly fish is closer to the line, which is usually deeper. A lot of people talk about turnover and getting a fly to turnover. Um, I, I just don't really buy into that. Even a completely weightless fly is, is going to be heavier than your average fly. It's going to turn over. If you make a decent cast at all, it's going to turn itself over. I mean, that's, that's just the way it's going to work. It's a little bit heavier. A shorter leader will be way more accurate to cast than a long leader. If you're only casting a three foot leader, it's gonna be way more accurate than a nine foot leader that's, that's the wind can blow at the very end. A lot of things can happen. Shorter equals more accurate, longer equals a little less accurate. So now diameter. This is one of those places where uh, cool conversations happen with big streamer guys because of different ideas and stuff like that. This is my idea. This is the way I look at it. Diameter typically equals heavier pound test. It's just kind of the way it goes. But there's pluses and minuses for everything that we do. So if you add diameter or pound test, then you're going to take something away from the other side. We'll go back to the sail parachute analogy. If you have a big, huge parachute, it's gonna drop whatever is attached to it a lot slower than if you had a parachute that was a lot smaller. So, bigger equals slower, smaller equals faster. We're talking sink rates here. So, this is one of those critical things where, yes, we could tie on a, a phone charging cable to the flies. The fish that we're fishing don't care. I promise you, you could tie in a coaxial cable to your fly and a brown trout or muskie will still eat it. But the takeaway is you lose how fast your fly will sink and you lose a lot of motion to the fly. So like I said, everything's a give and take. Now I'm not going to tell you what pound test you should fish or, or anything like that. I don't know your exact setup, but 20 pound mono versus 50 pound mono. The 20 pound mono will sink way faster than 50 pound mono, period. 
Now, if you're fishing a floating line with a heavy fly, this changes everything. If you're fishing a fish skull head on a, on a sculpin, and you're fishing short shots that you want to get that fly into a bucket really quickly, this is where this technique will come into play. And, th and this is going to make perfect sense. If you're fishing a fairly deep river that you want to fish super deep and you have a, and you have a floating line, if you have a three foot leader, the fly will only sink three feet and then it'll start to pull your floating line down. It, if you want to fish nine, ten feet deep, you just can't do it. So this is when we add a longer leader. Now I personally very, very go any longer than seven, seven and a half feet. But I know guys that will fish a nine foot leader on intermediate lines or floating lines with a heavy fly um, just, to, just to get down. And this all goes back to we want our fly to get to the depth where we want to fish it as quickly as possible. So if you're fishing a floating line or a slow sinking line in, in pretty deep water, you don't want to use a three foot leader because the fly is going to want to drop very quickly and then the floating or slow sinking line will be slowing it down trying to trying to keep it up. So use a longer leader to let your fly get down before your line starts to force it to do what it's doing, which is not sinking as fast. I'm sure you catch that. <laughs> Stepping into leader formula type of stuff, this is really not a formula. This is because when I think of formula, I think of like a bunch of different things. This is two pieces. And we'll get into the whole mono versus fluoro thing in just a second. For these measurements, none of this is exact. I, I actually had to pull out a tape measure to see exactly how long of, of material I use. I, I just... I don't measure it, and I never will. I'm gonna get somewhere close to what I am used to and go from there. So for my butt section, I have right at 20 inches of 25 pound test mono. For my tippet section, I have right at 20 inches of 16 pound test mono. So we're talking right around three foot total length. Um, I, I'm always gonna flirt with that three foot liter total length. I, I'm always going to be right at that area. That's the area that I have found to be my comfort zone. And then a really cool knucklehead on the end of it. <laughs> so mono versus fluoro in streamer fishing. We're not talking nymphing or dry flies or anything like that. We're talking streamer fishing. So we're going to start with mono. And what I see as the advantages of mono are number one, knots. We're going to cover knots in the next episode of Streamer Tactics, but when you're talking knot performance and knot seeding abilities, you cannot beat mono. Mono will tie those really sexy knots that are seeded well. Um, as you're pulling the knot tight, it's not going to hang up on itself. Um, this is where mono is drastically better than fluoro in my opinion. Another advantage that's probably also a disadvantage is mono has stretch. When you start talking stretch, I, I think you're really splitting hairs here. I, I really, really do. Those people that say that the stretch of mono is a bad thing um, are probably not looking at their fly line itself very closely at all because stretch is going to happen within a fly line leader tippet rig it's going to happen period so if you have a three foot long section of monofilament and a 120 foot long fly line it's going to stretch if you have a 120 foot long fly line and three feet of fluorocarbon you're going to get stretch Maybe not so much in the fluorocarbon, but in the line. This is moot. This whole point is ridiculous in my eyes. I, I cannot see why we even talk about this. Sorry, I kind of bounced into a, a disadvantage. But, but the good thing about stretch is it's a shock absorber. That's a good thing. This is you get you get a striper or a brown that's just head shaking like crazy. It's going to absorb a little bit of that shock. Stretch can be good, it can be bad. 
it is what it is. Another advantage of mono is the price. Uh, mono is drastically cheaper than fluoro, to the tune of like 66% cheaper. Maybe 75% cheaper, it depends, but way, way cheaper. So when you get into the disadvantages of monofilament, um, again, this is what I call a disadvantage. This is uh, there, there are people that are gonna agree and there, there are people that are gonna disagree. Uh, this is what I look at. The disadvantage, and I'm, and I'm proudly going to contradict myself, but the disadvantage of mono, the, like pretty much the only disadvantage I can really, really think of is stretch. <laughs> And this is me, this is me kind of throwing a bone to those guys that talk about stretch and how stretch is not good because, and it's a very valid point. So when the fish eats and you're stripping tight, a little bit of stretch there is going to hinder a little bit um, your your hook setting abilities, your the hook penetration abilities. There's no denying this. So some of the advantages of fluorocarbon is it's gonna be slightly stronger per diameter. So if you're talking like the X factors, your your 3X fluorocarbon is going to be about 8.8 .8 pound test, whereas your 3X mono will be somewhere around that 5 pound mark, 6 pound mark. So uh, there is definitely an advantage there, 100%. That advantage being you don't have to use a thicker diameter tippet or leader to get the pound strength that you really want. One of the other advantages is uh, the abrasion resistance of fluorocarbon. Uh, fluorocarbon is more uh, resistant to abrasions off of rocks, uh, just off of different things. Um, uh, without a doubt, it's a harder material. I, I totally get it. I kind of have a problem with this one too because if you are, if you're checking your leader as much as you should be checking your leader, and you find a nick in your leader anyway with, I don't care if it's fluorocarbon or monofilament, whatever you're using, you need to cut that off immediately, no matter what it's made out of. So this advantage in my eyes is, is very minimal, um, but it is an advantage. Abrasion resistance is absolutely an advantage, but don't let that be a reason that you leave a nick of any kind, any kind of abrasion, any kind of anything in your leader, tippet, or whatever it is, because you're just asking for problems. Another advantage is, is this is just me being honest. I, I've already talked about this a lot, but the no stretch thing. And fluorocarbon doesn't have stretch, or it has very minimal stretch. Um, you're gonna get stretch out of anything if you pull hard enough on it. Uh, you are, but the difference is quite a lot. If you can see the difference of stretch in mono and fluorocarbon, you can you can feel it, and 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 that's a that's an advantage in my eyes, as as well as I mean almost everybody's eyes. Another advantage is it's less visible. Now I I don't know if it's because of how it's made or if it's because it's a smaller diameter uh, than its counterpart, the mono. Um, but I really don't think the visibility thing is really much of a, of an issue when it comes to streamer fishing, because like I said earlier, we are chasing the predator fish that we are trying to catch in every river that we chase. So, um, you know, big muskies, big browns, big smallmouth, big stripers, whatever it may be, most of these fish are not going to be super line shy and Three feet away, we have fly line that is, you know, a huge diameter. Uh, I think it's a stretch to say that uh, a, a big brown trout or, or any of these things are going to be line shy if they're really going to eat. The whole visibility thing of monofilament versus fluoro. Fluoro is way less visible. But the fly line you're using that's three feet away from your, the fly is not less visible at all. <laughs> Some disadvantages of fluorocarbon. Uh, the very first thing that is the elephant in the room is the price. Fluorocarbon is very expensive. It's a game changer. In my eyes, it has just as many disadvantages as monofilament. It has just as many advantages as monofilament. 
Um, so if I'm going to compare apples to apples, I don't want to spend three times as much for an apple. <laughs> so the Achilles heel of fluorocarbon, and, and I think most everybody kind of agrees that it doesn't knot really well. Uh, you you kind of have to help the knots sometimes, and it, it's it's not a smooth knot process. You know, monofilament is a smooth knot process. It it gives on itself, whereas fluorocarbon fights itself. It, it wants to fight itself, and it and that's just a that is the total difference. I don't care about price. I don't care about anything else when it comes to knots. If a knot is not seated correctly, I will cut it off and do it again. And I find myself doing that way more often with fluorocarbon than I do with mono. So to wrap this up, uh, your, your fly line is no good without your leader. And your fly is no good without your leader. So I, I think the common theme is every step and every progression that we're going to cover in this video series is just as important as the last and um, each has its advantages and disadvantages over the previous and the next step so all this comes together to be the best thing that we can put forward and give us the best chance that we have of hanging what everybody's looking for and it's the fish of your lifetime so the next episode a great song anyway so the next episode we're going to cover knots and um and, and i'm a, i'm a knot snob i i really am i love tying knots give me a blood knot give me a perfection loop just i like knots i'm one of those weird people make sure you subscribe because we're going to be moving forward with it. every episode will have a different thing to it and we're going to get on the water and do more on the water as it comes to those points so um, yeah, uh, this is a fun, fun series, and it's just going to get even more fun from here. So, I need a sign-off of some kind. I don't, I don't really know what to... Hold up.